This is a Force for Good broadcast coming to you from the great British city of Glasgow. My name is Alastair McConaughey. <laughs> Coming up in the program, we are going to offer a four-point statement of position intended to help our Conservative, Labour and Lib Dem members of the Scottish Parliament fight off the constant seditious threat of a second referendum. But before we get to that, not ashamed to be Scottish and British. Together we've built one of the greatest nations in history. Fantastic words from a Tessa Hartman, who is a Scots fashion guru and who runs the Scottish Fashion Awards. Now the interesting thing about the Scottish Fashion Awards is that they're held in London, which of course, if you're British, is neither here nor there. But if you're a Scottish nationalist, perhaps you get a little bit uptight about that. Anyway, good for Tessa Hartman. She came out very strongly when she addressed her awards ceremony and she was reported in The Scotsman on Saturday the 22nd of October 2016. And she said, on a regular basis, I get asked why I have the Scottish Fashion Awards in London. Normally, I would defend my position vigorously and remind everyone we built this event from the ground up, supported only by the private sector, not the Scottish Government, and did indeed hold it in Scotland for seven years. But frankly, I'm now so tired of the parochial arguments and barrage of social media exchanges. I'm not ashamed to state I'm proud to be both Scottish and British. Scotland and England, together with Wales and Northern Ireland, have built one of the greatest nations in history. Fantastic. Well said, that woman. Isn't it time we stopped arguing about political borders and instigated a culture of optimism and even risk-taking? Isn't it time we started thinking bigger and thinking, yes, we can take these awards and celebrate Scottish fashion and its valuable contribution to any city in the world? Indeed, you certainly can. And we also like this comment from Tessa Hartman. She said, Fashion was a classic example of how Scottishness was a, quote, essential element of British identity. And she cited Tartan, Harris Tweed, Kashmir, and the likes of Vivian Westwood, the Sex Pistols, and Alexander McQueen. And, you know, we were struck by that reference there to the punk rock culture. And some of you may have noticed that I am wearing what I call the punk rock tartan, which is actually the Royal Stuart tartan. Now, there are variations of the Royal Stuart tartan. This is one of them. This is my favourite variant. And whenever I see this tartan, I don't think of Scotland. I think in my head, the associations which I have are of the wider British music scene over the past 30 odd years. And so I did a little bit of research into the Royal Stuart Tartan. And according to StuartSociety.org, the best known of all Scottish Tartans, the Royal Stuart, is the Tartan of the Royal House of Stuart and the personal Tartan of Her Majesty the Queen. In the same way that clansmen wear the tartan of their chief, it is appropriate for all subjects of the Queen to wear the Royal Stuart tartan. Wonderful. An example of how Scottishness merges seamlessly 
into Britishness and contributes to it in a very strong and powerful way. So congratulations to Tessa Hartman. That really heartened us and pleased us when we read those strong words, strong words, strong words. Scotland and England, together with Wales and Northern Ireland, have built one of the greatest nations in history. I'm not ashamed to stay and proud to be both Scottish and British. And talking about music, check out this song which we found on YouTube yesterday. It is a take on the Who Do You Think You're Kidding Mr. Hitler song and it's been put to a punk rock beat and the words are pro-Brexit. We think it's very clever, we think it's well done, we think it's very funny. Check it out. Thank you. More of that by clicking on the link provided. In this short segment of the programme, we're going to look at two or three comments here that have been posted on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash UK, a force for good. And we get, we get a pretty high calibre of comments from people, many of which are definitely worth repeating this one from someone that we'll refer to as JL. This person says, if Scotland had become independent, it would have already automatically have left the EU. So, irrespective of whether the UK subsequently remained or exited the EU, that is to say that what had been left of the UK subsequently remained or exited the EU, Scotland would already not be part of the EU. So why are TV politicians and panellists and presenters and interviewers incapable of getting and making and sticking to that point when they interview SNP people? You know, if you had had your way in 2014, Scotland would already have been out of the EU. So what on earth are you complaining about at the moment? Another one here from someone RB, who is concerned about the extent to which Alex Salmond has the ear of people in England and is deliberately worming his way into their heads in order to set them against people in Scotland, which he's undoubtedly doing. And RB says, Salmond is doing a very good job on LBC radio, that's London radio, and in his newspaper columns and on the likes of Question Time, in alienating Scotland from the rest of the United Kingdom, making it out that all Scots want to leave the UK and basically being a pain in the backside. It's his plan because he hopes that the rest of the UK will say, do you know what, just sod off. And we have responded there, we say yes, that is his seditious plan. And too many of the Scottish nationalists take their cue from his ugly example. A couple of comments here from RT, who takes a very positive pro-British optimistic role um, and point of view. He says, pressure must be kept up on pro-British politicians in Scotland and the rest of Britain to have a plan to consolidate and heal Britain and reach out to those who voted no and who voted SNP, however difficult that may seem. 
The SNP's attempts to use devolution to make Scotland separate and different from the rest of the UK and to exaggerate difference must be challenged and thwarted by subtle and not so subtle means by the British government, by British politicians and by lovers of Britain everywhere. We absolutely agree with that sentiment and we'll be getting to how some of that can be done just very shortly. RT also says appeasement must end and it's time to enthuse Scots and other Britons with a fresh vision of Britain in the world post Brexit and get that 45% down with infectious positivity. Great comments. You want to see comments from other intelligent contrib contributors, please check out our Facebook page and follow us at UK A Force for Good. So on the front page of the Sunday Times, Scotland, 23rd of October 2016, the Tory MSP Adam Tompkins is quoted as saying that the Tories in Scotland would not block another referendum. As such, he appears to add his voice to that of his leader Ruth Davidson, who has said the same thing, and we addressed her comments in our video last week. Looking at this, we would remind the Scottish Tories that they were elected to their position as opposition in Holyrood on the basis of their alleged opposition to another referendum. That's what got them all their MSPs. And that, that opposition has to involve not just campaigning against one, but actually opposing one if it is proposed. Indeed, they would be selling out everybody who voted for them on that basis if they simply rolled over on that. As we keep saying and as we emphasised in our video last week, the, all the parties, Labour, Tory and Lib Dems, have to emphasise the big British picture. This isn't just about Scotland, this is about the future of the United Kingdom. It involves keeping our United Kingdom together and in that regard everybody in the UK, wherever you live, is involved. And the British government and Parliament especially has a perfect right and an absolute duty to maintain the integrity of the United Kingdom, to keep it together and to oppose anything which might in any way threaten that integrity. Now, some people will say that Nicola Sturgeon has a mandate and a majority to hold a separation referendum. Now, as we said on our Facebook page this week, we don't believe that she does. But even if she did have that mandate to hold another referendum, the British government and the British Parliament's mandate, implicit mandate, to maintain the United Kingdom far outweighs and trumps any mandate that Nicola Sturgeon and her separatists may pretend to have. That implicit mandate was conferred upon both the British government and British Parliament by everybody who voted in the United Kingdom general election in May 2015, including the SNP voters who voted to send MPs to the British Parliament. So the British Parliament has a mandate which has been given by everybody. The British Parliament has a mandate to keep the United Kingdom together. And that mandate trumps the mandate which Nicola Sturgeon has to try to break it up. So let's go to our four point statement here, which introduces this larger principle. The larger principle that the territorial integrity of the British nation state cannot be constantly up for question. There is no other nation in the developed world which would allow its territory to be constantly called into question.
That's principle number one. The territorial integrity of the British nation state is not up for question and to question it is to be deliberately seditious. By seditious we mean to agitate against properly constituted authority in order to overthrow it. To constantly advocate a second separation referendum is to be seditious, it's to use seditious language and we who believe in maintaining the United Kingdom should have zero tolerance for such language. We should recognise it for what it is. It's an attack upon the stability of our society. Point number two, this sort of language creates constant instability, constant uncertainty, constant unrest and is damaging economically, socially and psychologically to the fabric of our society. And it would be considered intolerable in any other developed country in the world. Point number three, the majority of people in Scotland do not want another referendum and there would be large support for politicians standing up against such a referendum. Politicians should not just follow the public, they should also lead the public. And politicians who stand strongly and oppose a second referendum and turn around to Nicola Sturgeon and say no you're not getting it, people would rally behind them but the politicians and the leaders have to do that before it will happen. And the fourth point, the idea that refusing a second referendum would increase support for Scottish nationalism is a deliberate SNP argument. That's how they frame it, that's how they sell it to everybody else. And we, who are everybody else, should see that as a deliberate SNP ploy, certainly supported by many in the media, but it's a deliberate SNP argument and we should not fall for that. The reason it appears that many of our MSPs from all parties are following, falling for it is because they do not have a strong philosophy of the British nation state, therefore they're not able to recognise an attack upon it. An attack upon it by people who do have a strong philosophy about the British nation state, albeit a hostile one. And so we urge the Scottish Conservatives, Labour and Lib Dems, not just to campaign against another referendum, but to actively oppose one if Nicola Sturgeon were to attempt to call one. The way to defeat the threat of separation is not to hope that you might win a second referendum. That would solve nothing so long as the SNP remained in power. The way to defeat the SNP is to remove them from political power over us and we do that by defeating them democratically at the ballot box, at council elections, Holyrood elections and at the British general election. Okay, that's the way to do it. Now if you like what we're saying here and if you agree with us, please do support us. We're not being shy about that. We do need your financial help because you, the viewer, is the flesh and blood and bones of our work here and we can't do it without you. So if you can financially support us, there are ways in which you can get involved. Check out the show more box directly below. You can send us a donation via PayPal or go to the donate page on our website, aforceforgood.org.uk where there's various options that you can get money to us, including setting up a standing order, which really does help us plan for the future. There's also a, a new way which we have established. We've joined Patreon.com, which means that you can become one of our patrons. What this involves is you sending a payment which is automatically deducted from your credit card or your PayPal account with every video that we release. 
and that amount can be anything upwards of one dollar. It's all done in American currency but it's converted automatically to sterling when you make the payment. So check out patreon.com, click on become a patron and follow the instructions to become a patron for our work here and for every video that we produce you can contribute automatically an amount of your choosing. Please also subscribe to us by clicking the red button there, there or down there. Our first goal is 250 subscribers. My name is Alistair McConaughey and this has been a Force for Good production. <laughs>